illegal immigrants should not be given that same privilege. They need to get in line and to do things in a proper way. Uh, I think that we encourage it often, uh, you know, by uh, employers who, who are not fined stiffly for having illegal immigrants. Uh, I also think that uh, another way that we can help prevent it, I think right now, Lieberman, uh, Graham, and there's another senator that is working on um, uh, biometric social security cards. So Schumer. That you, would, you would use, excuse me? Schumer. Schumer. Uh, you might, would use those cards. So while we get put into place, all of these are steps you can take, you know, but we really have to have a program for these, um, you know, immigrants, uh, illegals, that if they break the law, they're deported immediately. Uh, that's the way I feel about it. They're deported immediately. Um, but also, we should work out, I think, a program for them to work, but they have to pay fines and taxes, and I don't, if there is ever a way for them to get citizenship, it's a long process because they have to be at the back of the line. So you're saying those here, those here, you would put into some sort of work program where they have to wait could, like to become a citizen? If we could. But there's so many Americans out of work. Well, I don't. Why would we take an illegal and give them the opportunity first before our own citizens? I think it depends on the work. I think there's work. I think that's a mis no, I, I, I'm so sick of hearing Americans wouldn't do it. Well, yes, they would. They're hurting. And, and I think you're right in a lot of circumstances. I do not believe, though that we could afford to spend a uh, billion dollars, which is about the estimate it would take to deport, or if you could identify and round up 14 to 20 million people. I think we should make them pay, find them, uh, take all of the steps to make them pay to be here and not grant them citizenship. Can I ask a follow-up? Yeah, question before you move on. Yeah, just follow-up is very simple. If you remember the campaigns, I watched all 13. John McCain was here, Mitt Romney was here. He says, will you send them home? There's a difference. What you're saying is basically amnesty. Will you send an illegal home, not put them to work? That's what Mr. Romney wanted. Mr. McCain couldn't answer it on national stage. Yeah, well, I think if you identify them to send them home, if they yeah. break the law, send them home. The process but they broke the law to be here. That's true. Exactly. They're, they're illegal, so they've broken the law to be here. And that's, you know, that's the argument. I do believe it was too costly for this country to send 14 to 20 million people. It's too costly for us to keep them. That's right. Between our hospitals and our jails and need to go home. Because if we were in their country, we'd be in jail. That's right. Yeah. Mr. Axe. Yeah. <laughs> Linda, we all know that the federal and state governments have seen a substantial decline in tax revenue. The pension obligations, the entitlements, are leading this country into bankruptcy. They are not addressed soon. By the year 2020, the United States will be bankrupt. Greek debt, two-year notes, hit 13% last week. Ours will be soon to follow. Would you propose a 50% reduction in all government pensions across the board? I, I could not answer that today without understanding what that benefit or imp negative impact might be. To, to the, neg the negative impact will be on the taxpayers in this country. They are sick and tired of paying their employees more than what they make. Connecticut alone owes $20 billion to state workers, $18 billion more in medical um, payments. Are you talking current or current, people? Deferred liabilities. People are already late. Current and deferred liabilities that are not on the books. Their accounting is a sham. The state governments across the country owe $3 trillion. These are states. Indiana alone and Illinois, their budget deficits are 50% of the, their 50% this year. If this is not stopped, we will be bankrupt. So we are looking, this is why the Tea Party Revolution started, to take back this country from the parasitic tax eater. Those are the people who are living off of the productive one way to stop this is to propose legislation which will stop the taxpayer who works every day from paying the freeloader working for federal, state, and local governments, providing a service that we do not need. So I'm asking you, would you propose legislation to reduce their benefits by 50% and bring them in line with the private sector? 
I think they should be brought in line with the private sector. I don't know what reforms we should take relative to uh, relative to pensions or re regular to relative to those programs that you cited. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I've listened to all of the gubernatorial candidates talk about how they need to reform the pension system within the state. Uh, I think, uh, as I've said, I think congressmen, congresswomen should also abide by the laws that are uh, for everyone. And the laws in the private sector, I think, I, I'm, look, I'm a capitalist. I, you know, I believe in private, you know, free market, uh, you know, free enterprise system. I think that we should have tax cuts across the board. I think our income tax should be cut. I think we should keep the Bush cuts in place, but we have to couple that with reduction in spending. Because the Bush tax cuts, while they were good, we did not re reduce our spending at the same time. And so therefore our economy didn't rebound as it might have. Jobs that are in the private sector and the government that are sometimes double, I'm sorry, jobs that are in the government are sometimes double uh, the pay for that same job in the private sector, which I think then indicates that government is trying to grow and grow by paying more to get people in. And then, yes, they get on the pension system. I think that's wrong. We need to create parity between the private sector and government. I think government salaries are too high. And I think there are too many that are in government. <laughs> I often ask uncomfortable questions, and I have one for you. Uh, well, let's change that. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not affiliated with any Tea Party group, although I support the Tea Party and want to go to Tea Party. For me, I got involved with the Tea Party because I see an essential corruption at the federal level. <laughs> but there is a power structure now that I believe is inherently socialist. And it is driving us to the absolute break. And I want to know if you are ready for what you are facing. You're going to, if you're elected, you're going to walk into a Washington that picks people like us who have legitimate questions for power and cast us as racists, cast us as seditionists, cast us as, as possible terrorists because we have the temerity to ask our government questions. And when you go there, you will be expected to either step in line and be a lap or they're going to turn the machine on you. And none of us here really will use the media, do we? I mean, I don't. Are you ready for this? That's my question. Yeah. Well, I don't know uh, what all of the powerful forces might be that would be turned on me and hopefully other uh, newly elected senators and, and uh, uh, and representatives who will be going in November, because I hope there's going to be a bunch of us. But, I'm not trying to make a joke out of your question. I think well, we, I think we, no, we're, we're guaranteed the right of free speech under the First Amendment, and we have the right to question every member of Congress uh, on any issue at any time. Uh, I am not a wilting flower. Uh, and I've not built the kind of business uh, that I've built from starting, coming back from bankruptcy and doing what I've done by being intimidated or, or being defeated. And I'm not a party lapdog. Uh, can, can I have a follow up here? There, actually, did I get done with that? Yeah. <laughs> there, there, there is actually some history to this question. And the, the history to this question is, and it really hit home with me, I don't know if it hit home with a lot of people in Connecticut, but it's really bugged me. And that was the AIG bonuses. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The executive branch sent busloads of protesters for a law that he right. signed yeah. to the homes of Connecticut citizens to intimidate them. Yeah. Okay? Uh, that's really kind of strange. And that's the type of power structure you're going to be walking into and expecting to step into one thing. And intimidated so, Senator Lee. Leonard, 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 answer, please. Sorry, but Senator Lee. So, Art. <laughs> you have no reason to believe anything that I'm telling you today because I have no track record yet in Congress. If you think I've got the stuff to go and take it on, Do you I, think I would. You have the stuff? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Said uh, well, to friends or whatever, it's a good thing I'm Irish because I really do love to fight. <laughs> <laughs>